All right, welcome to the show. Today, we're going to talk about something we haven't mentioned. I'm surprised we've done this many episodes. We're going to talk about how to work with contractors. If you're in New York State, uh, honestly, if you're anywhere in the country, this will be applicable. But Michael and I do the most of our renovations in, in, uh, in New York. And uh, before we get into that, I actually just completed a renovation, a smaller renovation in California, and I got lucky as hell. I found two contractors. Both were referrals, and they were... One was a little expensive, but that was okay. They were the most reliable contractors I've, I've ever worked with, honestly. Actually, second most reliable contractors. And I barely knew these guys from a hole in the wall. I went to, I think I made, I showed face there like two or three times just because it was 20 minutes from my house. So the point of that is that sometimes you're going to find some gems. And once you start doing volume, you'll find out if they're really gems. Um, and then uh, we're just going to cover everything you need to know about contractors today in the next 30 minutes. So we're going to, we're going to cover, um, you know, how they work, what to look out for, what to say to contractors, what not to say to contractors. That's the key there. Um, so, Michael, what, what is what has your experience been? You've renovated a lot more houses than me uh, with contractors. And, oh, we're also going to talk about the difference between hiring a GC versus hiring, subbing out the job, because that that's a whole other, you know, can of worms. So I get asked a lot about contractors, right? One of the, one of the main fears that I find that people haven't done this business have are how am I going to find a contractor? And I, I don't have a great answer to it. Right. It's something that I, I honestly say, I, I can't, I can't really give. there's no magic. Everybody wants this magic thing. Like, uh, you know, dial this number and some guy will refer you a contractor who's going to be quick, cheap and good. Um, but the truth is those are the three things, right? Speed, quality and price. And I, someone once told me that you, you hope to get two. Right, you almost never find three, so you have to sort of decide which one you're gonna you're gonna be easy on. Right? Are you gonna pay a little more? Um, are you going to have somebody that's not as quick, or you have somebody that's not as good? And I think you really should think about it that way. Um, but there is no easy answer, right? I, I remember someone I, I wrote I saw like a, a video ten years ago where the guy said, "Go to Home Depot at like six a.m. when they open, and you'll find the best contractors because those are the guys who are there early." And I bought, I bought like a sign. It was like one of these things I picked up and it was like, I'm looking, we're looking to hire. And it didn't really result in much. Um, so there, I don't think there is, maybe if I did that every day for, for, for a year, I could find people, but you don't really know if somebody's good just because they come over to you at Home Depot. There is no quick and easy answer to how to find good contracts. I think everybody wants that, but we'll talk about finding contractors and we'll talk about how you sort of protect yourself against contractors who may try to screw you. And I think it's the, the most important thing to understand is that there, there is no easy answer. The reason why scaling a flipping business where you're actually doing work, a major work on a property is so hard to scale. One of the main reasons is because hiring contractors is not, is not easy. There's no, there is no, there is no. I hundred percent agree with you. I think the only way to scale the flipping business, if you want to do that, if you have the crazy, if you really want to get into that brain damage is you got to have a, your own construction company or something you, where you're controlling it, but you're still like, even then, it. like, I know we, I know guys who really do a lot of flips and they, they have a whole project management team, but even then it's not, it's, it's hard. It's still hard. Right. And, and, and in New York, it's harder than a lot of other places because, because dealing with the local municipalities is very difficult and licensing for these guys is not so easy. So, um, for instance, I'm in Nassau County. So you may have a Nassau County home improvement license, but if a guy is doing work in the in a village of Malvern, he needs to be approved with the village of Malvern. So you almost, in, when you're doing work in certain areas, you need to go and ask them for an approved contractor list and then go through that. And they may not be the contractor that you use. That may have different guys. So yeah, that's all of the Valley. It's, it's, that's everywhere. Part of New York. And, and, yeah. and costs here are, are higher, right? People pay their subcontractors and their, and their uh, laborers more here than a lot of parts of the country. So in general, Costs are higher, and uh, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's a hard thing in New York. There's no, there's no easy way, but we're gonna give as many tips as we can. To yeah. Make it, make it. So I'll I'll, I'll kind of get into like how to find contractors, or at least how I found contractors. And and this is not not rocket science here, but it, it's referrals, right? And that's the number one way that I found contractors. Funny, one of my best guys actually. The way I found him was actually from a PPC ad. Uh, I, my People. mom was like back like five years ago. She's like, hey, can you help me find someone to like do the bathroom. And I'm like, yeah, sure. So I Googled like contractors near me and I found this guy and Javier and he just showed up and I was like, you know, at arm's length, you know, and, and I was like, all right, like just do the work. And 
he did everything what he did everything he said he was going to do and then this was a small job well a small job relative to you know just doing a bathroom so then i called him for another job and did everything he said he was going to do and i kind of got lucky um i don't think he does volume really but but at the end of the day referrals i found have been the best source to get contractors other other people doesn't have to be investors it could be homeowner well homeowners is a little tricky because they're going to do it with consumers but word of mouth for the most part is is the way to go and then the biggest thing i would say if you're not doing high volume is you want to find contractors who don't have huge contracting businesses if you find that you're going to get to reamed up you know what because they're they're just they're it's like a wholesaler selling for top dollar versus the new wholesaler who's going to exclusively sell you properties Right. That's a, so it's a big deal is when you, when you, wherever you find the contractor, and I agree with you that referrals is the number one way to find them. Yeah. You can't be using like a standard home remodeler because no. those guys are charging a lot of money and you are an investor and you can't pay top dollar for your, for the work. Right. So you want to find referrals from other people who have done work for investors or other investors who have hired people. And you need to be getting properties at, you need to be getting the work at a discount, just like you're getting the property at a discount. hundred percent. The only thing I will do where I'll pay a little bit of a premium is if it's not a premium, but well, sort of, is if I'm doing like major, major, major things in the house, plumbing, electric, pretty much plumbing and electric. That I won't skimp out on. I'll hire a plumber. Well, I've done this the wrong way too. And it's bit me in the ass, but hiring someone who, might be a little bit more for something that could really impact the safety of the house. Like for example, electricity, that's like, I don't negotiate. Like that's like usually in the areas I operate and you have to have a certified electrician to do that, which is why well, I understand that. So plumbing and electric, let's put that to the side. I'm talking about wholetailing a house, doing a rehab that's less than 30 grand. I try to find one sub who has usually a small crew and things that aren't that dangerous, kitchens, bathrooms, um, painting floors. Generally that contractor can do everything, right? I don't want him touching the plumbing. I don't want him touching any electrical work, maybe GFI stuff, but like that you can save a lot on because that stuff isn't complicated. It's very simple. You can have day laborers do that. It's not fabricating is the same, you know, that's not that complicated. Right. So but, but as you mentioned, as you mentioned, plumbers and, and electricians, let's yeah. talk about what general, yeah. Huge. What a general contractor is and what, what the choices are. So in, most people are going to hire a GC, a general contractor, who's going to then hire out the subs we just discussed. So plumber, electrician, and other people, maybe a painter, uh, a sheetrock guy, a flooring guy. Um, the choice when, you, when you're when you doing work is whether you want to GC the job yourself, which yeah. means you are going to hire those subs, multiple subcontractors, and you are going to manage the job yourself. Um the advantage and disadvantage is it's going to be cheaper because a GC is going to take between 10 and 20% over and above for his own profit, typically. Yeah. Um, um, but he's going to be responsible for making sure the job goes well. He's could, he's technically your project manager. But everybody is different, right? There are GCs who will take the job and then just drop the ball also. So in general, I usually don't hire a GC. But if you're doing a major job, you may want to hire a GC because it's it's less headache for you, even though it costs a little bit more. But all, I mean, in general, if you're doing significant plumbing or electrical work, you want to hire somebody who's licensed because a lot of the municipalities are going to ask a licensed plumber or a licensed electrician to sign off on it. So, so people say, well, I'm going to use my friend who was an electrician or used to be, and then I'm going to have a different electrical company sign off for it or a plumbing thing. You could do that, but usually that's going to cost you money too, right? You have to pay that extra plumber to sign. I have plumbers who sign off on other people's work, but they're not cheap. They're going to look and they're going to make sure and they're going to say, this wasn't done the code. And I have to fix this. And I have to fix that. And then you got to pay them a couple thousand dollars to sign off on a job. So it would, and they're, what they're basically saying and what's probably true is you use me in the first place. And I found that that's usually the case. If you're filing permits and the, you need a plumbing permit, what we need here is very often a uh, electrical underwriters inspection. And if you don't use somebody who's licensed, they probably don't know what exactly is going to pass that inspection. Or if you use a, plum a plumber who's not licensed, he probably doesn't know what the plum plumbing code is. So using licensed people for those trades is usually a good idea, even if yeah. it costs a little. hundred percent. So let's get into how to pay contractors. Cause that's, that's where a lot of people just get 
blown out of the water. Um, so I'll tell you what I do, and I'm sure you do something similar. So I will get it in writing, whatever the job is, scope of work. Like I, I'm not a brain, I don't have software that does this. I just write this out on a Word document. And I will say, okay, so Mr. Contractor, we're going to go do this, 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 line items. This is exactly what we agreed on price-wise. I get it in writing, usually via email or text, somewhere where it's a proven document. And I say, I'm going to pay you a certain amount upfront for the materials. And another thing, I don't buy the materials. That's an, I, I haven't been to Home Depot to get supplies for a house in, I don't think I've ever done it, honestly, uh, except for a lockbox. Just because at the end of the day, especially if I don't live there, I, it's just, I'm going to have him give me his quote with all the materials. And then I'm going to verify and make sure he's not ripping me off. Once again, I will pay a little bit more because I'm not there where it's like whatever, but the jobs that I get quoted are materials and labor, right? I don't get them. I know people who do get their materials and that's fine. But for me, it's just not really efficient. And at the end of the day, I know what stuff costs for the most part. So like, if they're giving me some bullshit price, I could call them out on it and be like, that's not true. So with that being said, I will generally, what I'll do is I'll pay them a deposit up front for the materials. They will start the work. Someone will show up at the property, verify that they're not drunk uh, on the, you know, they're probably drunk, but as long as they're doing the job, I had one guy, they were drunk at the house. This property went to hell in a handbasket, but they, they put the floors in backwards and I, I made an appearance there and I looked at him and I said, what do you mean the floor is backwards? How was that? What kind of floor? Put, like he, there was two types of floors that were going in the property and he was supposed to put one set of floors in one way and then the other set of, and it was all ass backwards. And I looked at him and I said, can you see the problem here? And he was like, he didn't looked at me like I was from outer space, as you would say. And I said, this doesn't, this doesn't look right. You already put the floors in and they're, they're backwards. I said, you got to fix that. And he's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, well, you can be sorry. Just you fix want it. fix the fuck <laughs> job, you know? So you got to have the point of that is you got to have someone doesn't have to be you go there and make sure they're doing what they say they're going to do. Because the last thing you want is to pay a contractor before you verify because once they have all the money, listen, a lot of contractors are not going to fuck you over. Some of them will, but they're, well, well, <laughs> well yeah, I think, I've well, I, think I guess, knock on wood, but they're, they're, they're in set. You want to, you want to almost dangle a carrot in front of them because if, if you haven't paid them yet and they did some shitty work, you have leverage against them. But if you pay them up front and then all of a sudden they finish the job and they have another job they're going to go do. They'll probably fix it if they're decent humans, but they're going to drag their feet. They're going to go over like they're they're going to ask for more money. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So two two things you mentioned I want to talk about. First is material. So what I do is I have a Home Depot account with text to confirm. So I'll usually get a quote just for labor, and then I like go to Home Depot and buy all the stuff, and then I just text it so he doesn't have to wait there. I certainly don't have to go, but I can see every single invoice. I know what he bought, and I know like mm. sometimes he'll buy he'll buy other stuff. He'll buy whatever. Like if he buys himself water, I don't a case of water. I don't care. He might buy a ladder, but if he's buying a ladder every time on my jobs, I'm like, why, why do you need so many freaking ladders? So I, I check it. Um, but what's important also is if you're getting hard money, there's going to be a draw schedule from the hard money lender because hard money lenders usually pay for the construction. So it's very important that you match your draw schedule that the hard money that you gave to the hard money lender with what you're giving to the contract. So I've had situations where some hard money lenders are 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 pretty loose with that. Like if you told them you're going to do the interior first and the exterior last, they're going to be like, okay, we'll still pay you. Some hard money lenders are very strict about it. So I had a contractor once who was doing, we just went off the reservation. He just was doing his own thing. Like we, I, it's very important to do things in a certain order, right? Oh for yeah, example, yeah. For example, you don't want to do floors and then paint and then paint, right? You want to do floors last, right? Because when you, if you do floors first and then you paint, your new floors are going to look like shit when, when, when spackle and paint goes down on it, right? You need to do certain things, right? You need to do plumbing and electrical before you do the, close the walls up, right? There are guys who don't know that. They're just too stupid and they'll close the walls up and they'll go, oh shit, I forgot to run that water line. That happens all the time. So you, I'm very specific with them. You have to, so most contractors are not good businessmen, right? I'm not going to say they're not smart. Some are smart, some are not, but they're not good businessmen. They are people who usually were a subcontractor or a tradesman and they decided, I don't want to give up a big chunk of the thing and I'm going to become a general contractor. Or I'm going to do this myself. Most of them are not, they're, they're, they they don't they can't think well this and the other thing we'll talk about is multiple jobs and how what happens with them but i tell them the exact order it has to be done and i save them i am paying you and i also give them some money up front if they need or i'll or i'll have them go buy the materials if they don't um and then i'll say this has to get done first right you must do all the demo first you must then do all the plumbing the electrical sec, the second third yeah. and then it goes up i go if you don't adhere to this order 
I'm not going to pay you because I'm paying you $10,000 when you do this, $20,000 when you do this, $20,000, and that's how it works. So it's very important that, A, you match the draw schedule with the contractor to, if you have a draw schedule from a hard money lender, and that you stay on top of them staying in order. Very often, they will go out of order. They'll be like, oh, it's a sunny day. I'm going to do the siding now. I'm like, the lender is not going to pay me for the siding until the bathrooms are done. Don't do the siding now. So these are the kinds of things where, and I still believe, I, I am a firm believer that you, you could create an incredibly lucrative contracting business with simply the promise that you're going to speak to the clients every single day. That's all. Just every yeah. single day. Well, okay. I'm going to call you every single day. Even if nothing's going on, I'm going to call you and tell you why nothing's going on. Right. And I've done, I've done ma major renovations in my house several times. And big, and, you know, when the contractor starts, you're like, this is great. The framing goes up so fast. This is the great, you love the guy. He's amazing. And then as things progress, you want to kill him. In general, most people want to kill their contractor. Once in a while, you have a good, good experience, but and it's just because of lack of communication. These guys don't communicate, right? Where the hell is he? he? Hasn't been here in three days. If you're not coming for three days, it's fine. Tell me that you're not coming because the guy who does the taping and spackling is uh, sick. Whatever it is, well, it's all it takes. Just have com com communication every day. I think you could create a twenty million dollar contracting business anywhere. Just saying, I am going to be in touch with you every day. Do you prefer phone calls, texting, email, whatever you prefer? I'm going to contact you, and even after we're done, I'm going to talk to you. There's a problem later. And most guys are not going to communicate with you and they're going to disappear and they don't, they're not going to be honest with you. I'm on my way there when the guy's like in, in oh, Virginia. Oh, I've heard that story too many times. Oh, I'm on my way. You I'm hear in that traffic. <laughs> Stuck in traffic and doesn't show up for four days. That's some bad traffic, right? So um, you, it's very important that you give contractors an order. There is an order to do work that makes sense. There is orders that don't make sense. You, what you need to communicate with them. If you don't adhere to my order, you're not getting paid on work that you do because you didn't do it in the right order. So I think that's important. Now let's talk about multiple jobs and contracts. Oh, this is where it goes off. As I said, most contractors are not good business people. They don't manage resources well, right? They have really, most of the resources are labor, right? They're, they're getting a job from you and they need four guys to do the job. They don't manage their labor well. So I've had a lot of experiences where a contractor was really good on the first job. Great, excellent, priced well, did everything great. And he said, I want more jobs. I give him a second job and he's okay. And then he goes, I want more jobs. Give me a second. And I gave him two jobs at one time. I, so you think how much more complicated can two jobs be? He did two jobs for me and both jobs went to hell, like terrible material in the wrong place. Guys are not there. It almost took more than twice, much more than twice as long to do two jobs as it would have been if I just gave him one job and the next job because he wasn't able to manage his resources well. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's hard, right? If you use a contractor and he's good, and he's quick and he's and he's he's good, he's quick, he's cheap, he's all the things you want. And the guy says, please give me more business. It's hard to say no, but you have to be very, very careful because you give a, and some guy could manage two jobs. And when you give him three jobs, they all turn to hell. So you have to be on top of them, as you said, whether you're going there to see it, I don't know about every day, but almost every day, or you're sending someone to see it pretty much every day, you need to be on top of them and then and and recognize where things start veering right once the guy starts telling you yeah i'm going to be there this afternoon and then you send somebody there at 9 p.m and no one was there and then you go what happened and he goes uh, uh, uh the guy wasn't there what what, what do you mean oh uh, that's the they, day that they told me he was going there uh he'll, he'll get it done this weekend you know that and that's the kind of thing that just gets dragged on a lot and, and what, what what's really happening so let me tell you what really happened most of the time because these guys don't know how to manage their resources, they 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 keep taking on new jobs, right? Because for a lot of people, especially if it's a regular retail home remodel, they get a huge deposit up front and they need that cash because they don't know how to manage the cash. They don't know how to manage the payroll. They don't know how to manage all their resources. So you have two jobs coming in and then they go and they take a job and they take a big deposit and they need to show that guy some work right away. And if that means taking all their resources away from your two jobs to make that new homeowner happy where he's good, probably going to make more money than more money than, he's, than, he, than you're paying him, he's going to do that. And that's just what happens. Or people leave and, 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 and the guy didn't, you know, the guy pissed, the guy had a, the guy didn't buy them lunch and they all got pissed and walked out. There things like that happen all the time. They just, and they're not going to be honest with you. Like no guy's going to tell you, hey, all my, all my workers left me. They all left. No one's going to say that. He's going to say, oh, I had a problem, you know, where uh, I'm getting them tomorrow. Yeah, they just, they just don't, they, a lot of them are, they are, insecure and unable to be honest with you about what's really going on. And that, that, that is very, very common with contractors. So you have to be on top of them and make sure that, as you said, that you owe them money so that enough money that it incentivizes them to finish your job. Yeah. That's 
that is the nugget of the show, honestly, because at the end of the day, it, it doesn't matter where you're doing this. I mean, in our area, it is a little more expensive just because of the, the costs and stuff, but especially with, with the hard money, when you have a draw, I don't personally, I hate doing that because at the end of the day, I end up fronting the money anyway. And then it's like, kind of like this limbo period, but the, the contractors mostly cannot manage Like that's, I had one time, I remember this, it was the same job. I would show up there and all of a sudden, like, there was like the thing, the house looks like a tornado went through it. And I make a phone call and I'm like, Hey, like you said, this job was going to be done. And like, uh, you know, we still owe you money. And like, there's, there's shit everywhere. And, and like the house is like, looks like it's falling over. Like, and then, the, you know, it's the same, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And they, they, just, they just don't, they just don't get it. Like, and that's, it's okay. Like that's part of their thing. That's uh, kind of that, that their problem becomes your problem, but Right. So I've, I've, I've had conversations with contractors where I go, listen to me, if it's 98% done, it's like it's 0% done. I need yeah. to show this property to retail buyers. If there's 2% not done, it's not good. Now, I've also had the conversation with people who I, after a while, I realized they're never going to finish 2%. It's worth it for me to hire another guy, a handyman yeah. to come in and just do the punch list. Like if the guy, if the guy is cheap and he's, if the guy's not, if he's priced well and he does pretty good work, and um, and he's relatively quick. If he can't, there are guys who just can't finish, right? They just can't finish. So you, it almost pays for to bring in another guy to do finish the job. This is everything you need, you need to do, even if it's more, right? You save, if you saved enough from the beginning. So, but you have you should have that conversation with the contractor first, right? So you understand. I'm leaving ten fifteen thousand dollars for the end because I need everything on the punch list done, right? And some guys will say yes yeah, and not do it, and some guys will say yes and then do it. But it's got to be clear if you're selling a house retail. You can't have, you know, an open a window that 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 that's broken. You can't have him leaving all this stuff. Like I very, I, I very often hire cleaning crews to come in after I the do contractor's done. It's, wor it's worth it, even though the contractor says I'm going to clean it because they don't they don't clean it. They never clean it. Right. So that happens to me a lot. That's funny you say that because that always happens at the end of the job. It's like a looks like the dust bowl went on in the property, and I'm like, can you? I actually had this happen on a house recently. The job got finished. And I told, I called the contractor and I obviously wasn't there. Actually, no, I went there. I, this one, I, I showed up. And then after it was done, cause I was in New York and I said, um, I said, you got to go back there and you got to clean all the cockroaches out of the property. I said, and he's like, Oh, I clean them out. I clean them out. And I'm like, all right, well you clean them out. So he sends me this video and now I'm in California. So there's really nothing I can do. I sent someone over there to verify. And they said, Greg, it looks like the roaches have eyes have, have entered the property. And I'm like, I'm like, all right. So I called the contractor back. I said, listen, you said you cleaned all the fucking cockroaches out. They're still there. So go over there and clean them. And I was pissed because I paid him. He goes over, cleans the fucking property. Two days later, same thing. They're, they're back or they didn't do anything. So then, you know what I did? I called you the cleaning blame, company. You can't blame the guy for, for cockroaches. They come from other places. But... No, but the, he didn't clean them. He didn't clean them. He lied to uh, me. I said, okay. I said, dude, I said, just... If you can't do the job, just tell me. So then, you know what I did? I hired a cleaning company, a special. I hired the heart surgeon to do heart surgery. And magically, they never came back. So isn't that crazy? It's hard with cleaning also because like, I've seen jobs where they were a disaster and the guy cleaned it like 90%. And he did a huge amount of work. He spent hours doing it. But it's still not, it's still not where you want to show it. Yes, right? so yes. This guy is only going to, the guy is not going to, you know, pull out his toothbrush and clean out the grout in the top and the floor tiles, right? You need to find, get a real cleaning company to do that sometimes. So most contractors are not great at cleaning. There are guys who are spick and span clean, but you know, you, you, you have to, you got to take the good with the bad, right? And, and it, it's like, I usually figure it's going to be a couple hundred bucks for a cleaning service coming when they're done. And it's easier, it's easier not to fight with the guy about how dirty he left the place and just have the guy, have the cleaning crew come and just clean it all. As long as all the major stuff is done. The big, so like just in summary with everything. So this is like at the end of the day, when you, let's say you, let's just walk through a cosmetic, I'll walk through a real property. So this was a re, this was actually a big rehab. So this one was almost a hundred grand. So this, this property we had to do, we blew the back of the house off, which like I said, I normally don't do this stuff, but this, this long story short on this one. The property had an illegal porch on the back. It was totally illegal bunk porch. And it was it looked like it looked like a tree house. It was only and, a little illegal, right? It was only a foot illegal, right? Uh, yeah, maybe it was. It, it looked like it was like a hazard. Like if you walked on this porch, you might be, you know, deceased. You know, it was like the thing would fall over. So we got a permit, which I don't like doing. And we, we ended up knocking the whole back of the property off and built the deck. And 
But what, what ended up happening was th- this contractor, and I, this is where, like, this is a whole nother, I guess, show, but we did a good job. Like, he did a good job. He did everything he said he was going to do. The house looked really good. But I realized that there were some things in the property after this renovation occurred that didn't really make a lot of sense. Like, for example, we did the whole entire house. It was a gut job for the most part, at least downstairs. We blew and took the wall out upstairs, like did all like did a lot of shit. But I realized that we didn't put the right count, like the countertops kind of looked like shit. And then the cabinets, we, we didn't paint the cabinets, which is a small thing to do. Like it you doesn't do the cost ki- a lot of money. You didn't do the kitchen? We did the kitchen, but we didn't paint the cabinets. So after the whole thing was done, it just didn't look that good. And the cabinets just looked shitty. And I'm like, oh, we should have painted these. We didn't end up doing it. We still sold the house. But then even in the bathroom, like we didn't, the whole house is renovated. And then the bathroom wasn't up. Like it's just the bathroom. When I saw, walked the property, everything looked like shit except for the bathroom. So I'm like, you know what? Forget about the bathroom. Forget it. So then like, the, it just, it just didn't look right. Right. And like, so, so the point of that is like, if you're not, really there like i wasn't really running that job you can do a lot of the work and then if you're not clear like i should have added the bathroom there would have cost me maybe another i don't know three thousand dollars so like there's there's a lot of little nuances and a lot of these contractors aren't really going to pick up on that like sometimes the good ones will say hey you know what i know we're doing this but i really think it would make more sense if we did that most won't yeah most won't so then like all of a sudden they're going to complete their scope of work and then you know you're stuck with this property that it'll probably sell but then it's not is a lot of the stuff I've realized when you're doing a house flip, it's like these small things that don't really seem that important really sell the house. Like having that's a, good a whole, bathroom. That's a whole, we can do a whole other show. Where that's what we'll do I, next. When I was, when I was gut renovating everything, the hardest thing I had to do was decide what to do and what not to oh, do. Oh man. We, we should do a show on that. It's not a simple thing, but I, 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 I came up with a pretty good system for it. But when you're talking to contractors, you know, most of the time, they want to do everything, right? They want everything as possible. Um, but when something is not right, they, they're very rarely going to say, "Hey, you should do this." I think it's important. They just they just don't come up with it. But half the time, they're not even there. They send people they don't even know. So yeah, they send their their crews yeah. there. So last thing I want to cover on the contractor topic is you mentioned something in the beginning: good, cheap, fast. Three, pick two out of three. So I'll I'll tell you what I pick, and I want to hear what you so it, it, what I normally will do is the fast, the fast is usually, cause at the end of the day, if you're flipping a house fast is really gonna be correlated with price because the longer you have the house, you know, the the, the, the longer it's gonna, the more money you're gonna pay. Like every day you own a house with hard money, it's like a couple hundred dollars a day minimum, if not more, depending on where it is. So I look for fast and at the end of the day, I personally will, will usually pay a little bit more if the work is decent, right? So you're looking, for, had, fast, you're looking for fast and good and paying a little more. Fast and good, paying a little bit more. What What about you? And that's just my preference because if they can get it done, they can get it done. You know, cheap, I, I, I found that cheap contractors ultimately will cost you more money because when you get the home inspection on the flip, there's all this work that was done shitty, and all of a sudden you got to bring someone else in or you got to give them a credit, and so it the, just the, turns the into. A is, it's a question of how much, right? So in my most of my experiences have been with cheap and good. And not so fast. Now the question is: Did I did their did their did their lack of speed end up making them not cheap? Probably on a couple of occasions it screwed me over. I had a deal that took over a year; should have taken four months. Wow. Um, but you know, I, I wish I had a list of contractors where I can see good, fast, cheap. You know, you can t- you can check them off and say, "Oh, this one I need the fast and good guy, and I'll pay more." I, I, I wish I had. I wish I had that that kind of. Uh, that kind of lineup of guys ready to go. You know, sometimes it comes down to who's who's ready to do the job, right? You close. Oh, absolutely. You look absolutely. for a guy and the guy goes, I just started a job. I'm going to be here for four months. And you're like, I'm not waiting for you. I got to find somebody else. So <laughs> in general, my experience most of the time has been uh, go. I'm, I, I'm getting cheap and good and not so fast. But obviously, as we discussed, at some point, not, not so fast ends up being not, not being cheap. So that's what I found. Um, but... There's no right answer because cheap is all relative, right? Uh, you know, some guy could be – if a guy's four times as much money, you're not going to use him, um, even if he's fast and good. And if a guy is four times as slow, you're not going to use him, even if he's cheap and cheap and good. So, And good is, is all relative, right? Right? Some, you say the guy did a great job on this job, this house, and then he sends three guys who don't know, know how to put tile in on this house. And I go, this bathroom is fucking disaster. That's happened. I'm like, well, who did this? And he's like, oh, yeah, it doesn't look so good. I'm like, no shit, it doesn't look good. You got to break these tiles off and do them again. So it happens. There's no, there's no right answer because, because they're all 
different functions of how much they are, right? How much is how much is not fast going to cost you, and how much is not good going to end up making you do it again? Yeah. So there's no there's no answer, but I would say overall, I've probably gotten cheap and good over, over fast. fast, you know. Yeah. And then, but I just sort of keep it in my mind. So the, the really the only way one one nugget is, and this is hard to enforce, but I've told people you need to finish this job by X date. It, oh, if you finish yeah. by X date, I'll give you an extra five grand. If you don't finish by that date, not only am I not giving you five grand, but I'm taking two hundred dollars off of our contract price every day. The problem is, if some guy really jerks you around at some point, he's not going to come and finish a job. So, ideally, you want to put incentives in to finish quickly, and you want to put penalties in if they finish slowly. <clears throat> but understand, there's only so much, so far you can go with enforcing that because these guys, a lot of these guys, if they have a license, can put a, a mechanics lien on your property because you didn't pay them, even if you have a contract that says you're not going to finish by a certain date. They can always come up with an excuse why. And it's easy to file a mechanics lien, which sucks. You can't sell the house, you know, and you can get a mechanics lien even when you paid the GC and he didn't pay a subcontract. Oh, you can get screwed doing that. So I would say that um, you want to incentivize speed with money and you want to penalize lack of speed, but it only goes so far. Yeah. So you want to know the cure for this, for all the listeners. The cure, well... One of the cures, if you want to get involved in this crazy world of rehabbing, is the, the best way to prevent most of the jobs from going south, at least having a buffer, is buying the property at the right number. The number one <laughs> thing I see with people is if you overpay for a property and you're operating on a slim margin as a flipper, if you have one contractor do the wrong thing, your whole profit could get sunk, right? So if you can get into the habit, and we've covered many episodes on this, on spending time doing the right things by finding deals at the right number. And this is something that a lot of big flippers will say this, you get it at the right number. You can have a lot of these other things, these ancillary issues solve themselves over time. But if you overpay for a property and you, your budget is 30 and you can't go a penny over, that's when you start getting desperate as a flipper. And then all of a sudden your $25,000 profit turns into $5,000 and you basically did a house for free. So or you worse, gotta right? buy the deal worse, at the right number. I've I had three properties where I screwed up. I over, I didn't over improve them, but I I tr- I asked too much for them, and it took a long time to sell, and I lost money on each of them. So that's another discussion. But it's very it's very easy to over improve a property. It's very oh. easy to get in the habit of might as well, right? Might as well, right? Um, you know, kind might of, as well. Yeah, I just did that. Do these kitchen cabinets, and then the contractor goes, "Well, these floors aren't so great. You might as well do them too." And you go, "All right, well, how much is that going to cost? A couple thousand dollars, okay." And that thing happens for everything in the house, but, you know. It just it's never it never ends, right? You know, the closet closet on the on the third bedroom upstairs is a little small. You want me to expand it? And you're like, uh, how much is that going to cost? It's like oh, eight hundred bucks. But all these things keep adding and adding and adding, which is why I hate doing construction. Right? My goal really is to get to zero construction. I'll never get there. But these are the parts of the business that I abhor because it's just so easy to get into more and more. So I like doing as little work as possible. And then if I need to do more, I'll do more after, even if that costs me more when I do it. But that's another. That's not. That's off I topic. I just did that. I just did that in California. That ended up hopefully working out. We went into escrow like thirty two five over over ask, but you know it's got to close. It's got to be an appraisal, so I'll just get happy when the money's in my account. But you might, we could do another show on that about how much. Well, that's that's that. I think we should do the next show. Like, how, how do you decide what to do, what not to do? We could talk. Oh, about that's this. a good show. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. Look at that. I already have the great. idea for the next okay, show. Good. Well, I hope the listeners got value. I'm, I'm sure they did if they want to, you know, get into the crazy world of hiring contractors. God bless your soul if you plan to do that. Um, definitely, you got to watch this episode again. Share it with a couple friends, family members, whoever thinks this could be valuable. So, Mike, this was a good one. We will cover the the next one uh, with, with how to renovate a house the right way, what to do, what not to do. And uh, to all the listeners, we will catch everyone in the next episode.